the Georgia Bulldogs are national champions. But this is Billy Napier's first game ever in Florida Georgia history. Frank, tell us about some of your favorite memories. Well, why would we do it here at the station? On top of the van, let's go to the stadium. I've been to 38 of these, and my first game was 1973. I was 15 years old, which is a cool thing. And we didn't have a lot of money, but my friends, our neighbors had tickets, so we got to go. And it was a historic game. It was uh, Florida won the game 11 to 10. And Don Gaffney from here in Jacksonville, a Reigns quarterback, was the first black quarterback ever to start a game for Florida, and they won the game. And I remember that. I remember where I was sitting. I remember the whole bit. So Florida won the first game you attended. What about the next few? I was 1-0. That Good was job. big. Lost the next six. So then we were 1-6. But my overall record here as a Gator is 22 and 16. I know that because I counted it up right before we came on camera. That's why I know that. So, but there was a You big also have a crazy memory. And by the way, you're only old if you went to the first game in 1933. And I didn't do that. All right. So tell me some of the biggest moments in Florida, Georgia history. They happened right here on this field. I'll go you one better. I'll show you where they happened. Here we go. I've seen some wins and losses here in the stadium, but Frank, you've seen some of the biggest Florida wins and Florida losses. Let's start with the victories. What are some of the biggest Florida wins you've seen here? Well, the first one I told you about was the first game I ever went to. Lee McGriff caught a touchdown pass from Don Gaffney. They made it 10 to nine. And then Hank Folberg caught a two point conversion. 1973, I was 15 years old. Oh my God, it was the biggest thing ever. My favorite win for Florida was the 1984 win. They had lost a lot of years in a row. They had a really good team. They were holding on to, they wound up winning big, 27 nothing, but they were they were holding on to this lead. They had the ball in their own four yard line and Kerwin Bell threw this 96 yard touchdown pass to Ricky Natil, one of the biggest plays in the series. I remember that one. Later on, I remember them winning with Zook at the end of the game when Matt Leach made a field goal at the end of the game. Uh, think about it now, Florida had big wins. They were 18 and three under Spurrier, Meyer, and Zook. Spurrier was 11 and one. Meyer was six and one, Zook was two and one. So big, big wins later on. And those kind of stand out for me. Yeah, those were some fun times. Can you show me where the Natil play happened? Matter of fact, I can. Goldberg caught over there okay. in the middle of the end zone. And I was up there watching right in the middle of the end zone there. Natil along this left sideline. Right where they're he, lining the field. Right where they're lining the field here. And all the Georgia cheerleaders are over here all sad looking. So there's sad looking, there were the <laughs> Georgia cheerleaders were here looking sad and Ricky and Teal ran down here and we were partying like crazy. That was, in my mind, the biggest play for Florida, the biggest win for Florida in the series. Now, look, they won a bunch of games under Spurrier and all those, but for me, the biggest win in the series, the biggest game, Ricky and Teal came right here. That's where he came. That's pretty good. All right, well, obviously I'm a Florida fan, but let's get it to some of the big Georgia victories. Yeah, you know where Lindsey Scott ran? Right here, <laughs> right down the same, right again, here. again, right where they're doing the line here, right down the same sideline, and we all watched it, Pain er, earlier in that game, Herschel Walker, same sideline. This sideline's been a busy sideline. Herschel Walker went 70 yards on this sideline. Then Lindsey came the other way on this sideline, biggest win in Georgia history. This kind of southeast corner was a big deal for this, I mean, I, of all of them. In 1993, Florida won the game, the rain game, where it was raining like crazy, and it looked like Eric Zyre had thrown a touchdown pass to win, but Anthon Lott had called a timeout. So the touchdown pass didn't count and Florida held on. That was in this corner. I was standing <laughs> right there, grass and water up to my knees, watching the game as a media member. And right here is where it happened. So that was obviously a big game. Earlier I watched some games as a fan, that one I watched as a member of the media. Well, my first game was 1997. I brought some friends. Uh, they were cheering for the Bulldogs by the time the game ended. Georgia won that game. But do you remember where you were sitting for some of these big Florida wins and losses? Matter of fact, I do. Hey, this is Jeff Whitaker with Dome Hats. If you need custom hats for your team or your business, or you just want to see what we've got for sale in your favorite Florida State or Florida gear, come on down to the bar here in Jack's Beach. We'll be waiting for you. Well, this is the first place I ever sat for a Florida Georgia game, that first game I told you about in 1973. And I could see the field down there. Lauren, I'd never been to, we'd always heard about Florida Georgia games. Some, they weren't all on TV, but we always heard about them. And you always wanted to go to one. About the first half of the game, I just couldn't believe I was here. I'm like, I can't believe I'm here. It's a Florida Georgia game and I'm watching it. And then Florida winning made it great. So this was the first place I ever sat, southeast corner of the end zone, watching it there. And it was pretty cool. Now they didn't have these nice seats back the then, right? But it was all bleachers then. There were no seats then. Did they have these video boards then? They didn't have those either. <laughs> they had a scoreboard and that was about it. Either, at either end. 
So where else in the stadium have you been? You know, it's funny. I uh, when, when I watch games, the Lindsey Scott Herschel game, the Lindsey Scott game, I was over there. And I guess just the East stands probably about 25 rows up. That's where the students were. I was a student at the time. So, uh, so I was about 25 rows up for that game. For the Kerwin Bell to Ricky Natil game, I was in the far end zone. So they were running away from us. We were about 15 rows up. That's where they had, had us then. That was after I was out of school coming this way. So I think I was here, there. And look, most of these games I've covered as a media guy. So I was on the field or in the press box. If you look at the very top, at the four, that 410 up there, you see that little crow's nest? I do. It's supposed to be just for photographers. But when Touchdown Radio did the game here in 07, I was calling it with Gino Toretta. Oh. There wasn't room in the regular broadcast booths. Beautiful look with no bathrooms. Just so you know, there was no bathrooms up there. So that's where I was uh, for that game. Where'd you sit? I have also sat in this end zone the time that Jordan Reed fumbled and Florida went on to lose that game. I've sat on both sides. I've even sat amongst Georgia fans, which for me, not ever going to do again. Not a good thing because I can get a little obnoxious. All right, when it comes to the importance of the game here in Jacksonville, why does it need to stay here? Yeah, I, 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 you and I are both born and raised here. So this game means a lot to me, the fact that it is in Jacksonville. It means an awful lot to me. Number one, from an economic impact standpoint, mil tens of millions of dollars come into our uh, our market every year. Uh, heads in bed, that helps the, uh, the hotel people, that helps the restaurant people, it helps the hospitality folks. But it's more than that. It's a big part of our fabric and the self-esteem of the sports fans of this city. Lauren, we don't have a lot of things that some of the other cities have, and we know that. We don't have South Beach. We don't have Disney. We don't have uh, the growth that Tampa has shown and all the pro sports teams. We love our city. It's the best place in the world to live, and we all know that. But the fact that we have Florida, Georgia, and that's one thing we have that nobody else has. And I think it matters to those of us that are from here. It means everything. I hope the game never leaves. I like the fact that they just signed a, an extended contract that will mm -hmm. guarantee it to be here at least through 23. And then the teams have a two-year option after that. It's so important that the game's here, and it means the world to all of us who are from here. And if you've never tailgated down at the marina, that is a gorgeous place, and certainly getting to see the boats go by. Why did we have to stop calling it the world's largest outdoor cocktail party? Well, I think they've started calling it again, by the way. I think that, that was, there was too much party and then too much uh, going on, but I think they call it that again. That was a fun road trip. All right, the game is Saturday. What do you think, Frank? I think Georgia's too good. I think Georgia is going to beat Florida. The line's 22. I'm afraid the line's going to be pretty close. I got it 42 to 17 thereabouts. No way Florida's getting blown out in this game. They haven't gotten blown out all season. It's much closer than that. I think the Gators might actually win.